Did you know that modern science is underpinned by an atheistic presupposition? And this presupposition is bound to only, you guessed it, atheistic interpretations. Did you also know that the materialistic infiltration of science was a modern hijacking? Its roots can be traced back to the Enlightenment period, wherein certain intellectuals wanted to talk of God eliminated from the realm of rational explanation. Did everything they could to remove theological terminology from scientific pronouncements. And this resulted in atheists and agnostics making statements that reflected atheistic philosophy as opposed to theological terminology. For example, it was the famed agnostic Carl Sagan who said, the earth is just a pale blue dot lost in a cosmos of incomprehensible dimensions. As you can see here, Sagan is merely superimposing his own state of lostness upon the whole cosmos, upon you and me also. Notice how individuals that have already adopted a purely naturalistic interpretation of existence cannot help but evangelize the rest of us with their unproven assertions and conclusions. How does Carl Sagan know that the Earth is just a pale blue dot lost in a cosmos of incomprehensible dimensions? The answer is, he doesn't. He's simply making that up. You can thank God, Sagan, and all those who share his purely naturalistic interpretations of reality have zero evidence for their assertions and claims. Like many other agnostics, atheists and skeptics, Sagan is merely interpreting reality through a materialistic paradigm. And in a purely materialistic paradigm, you cannot have meaning and purpose. Therefore, the Earth is lost in a cosmos of incomprehensible dimensions. It's a given in a purely materialistic interpretation of reality. It's dogma. It's doctrine. It's one of the pillars of their faith. Now, the fathers of the scientific revolution were not atheistic in their reasoning and therefore did not subscribe to an accidental random universe that resulted from a bizarre set of inexplicable events happening for no reason or purpose whatsoever. Unlike the founding fathers of the scientific revolution, these Enlightenment thinkers despised any notion of intelligent causation rationality and purpose in the universe because they regarded such talk as coded references to God. They did not want a universe underpinned by a rational moral lawgiver and therefore they replaced God, purpose, rationality and meaning with haphazard randomness, purposeless and pointless inexplicable impersonal forces and this suited them perfectly fine. These God deniers knew that randomness renders the universe pointless, meaningless and purposeless and turns it into a bizarre set of inexplicable events happening for no reason at all. And they were perfectly happy with that. They also knew that randomness is not an explanation, but an avoidance of an explanation. Randomness itself is wholly non-empirical. No scientific advocate of randomness has ever perceived a random event. Despite what scientists say, all of these claims are philosophical, not scientific. Now I ask, where does the randomness it's predicated on originate? And how is it possible? How is it different from using magic as an explanation? There's no difference at all. After all, Randomness is not observable, it's not seen, only inferred, hence not empirical. But they did not care about that because randomness renders the universe fundamentally irrational rather than intelligible and thus gets rid of God. Invoking randomness was simply an inference, an inference whose philosophical task 
was to deny the alternative inference of rational agency. In short, to avoid the God problem, these intellectuals were forced to adopt illogical, irrational explanations for the existence of the universe. For them, all explanations are good as long as purpose and meaning are rejected at the outset. It's always a good idea to look into the history of a thing and learning how enlightenment reasoning infiltrated the scientific way of interpreting the world goes a long way to understanding how we got to this place in the first place.